Tonight's forecast is sponsored by Ashbrook Audiology, where relationships matter. Happy Tuesday to everybody. Hope you're doing well and managing to stay warm. It has been chilly across much of our area. I do want to begin uh, three years ago today. As most of us remember, we were getting ready right for Easter or right around the Easter time frame. We were just celebrated. And then again, by the end of the week, uh, we had some devastating tornado events. Uh, boy, I remember the day. It was very busy, Luis. Uh, was everywhere uh, keeping you updated online. I was here keeping you updated on social media. Uh, I just remember it being such an exhausting day, exhausting afternoon uh, for most of us because as you remember, we would be heading to the prom coverage of 2019 uh, that weekend. I don't remember which prom we had covered uh, this weekend uh, three years ago, but uh, boy, it was a quite an active uh, day to say the least. Again, these photos are coming from Alan Bailey. This was uh, popped up on my Facebook. I uh, share this on the business page at Staples Weather, and it came up showing that uh, this was one of the photos, and I have another photo here I'm going to show you in just a second, and uh, this is a wider angle of the view, and you see there uh, ho homes pretty much toppled. Uh, there was even some steel photos, I think, steel metal in that uh, photo, that first one there. This was a reported um, tornado that was right on 1040 on the Friday, April the 19th, of 50 to 60 miles uh, per hour. Areas impacted inc inc included Sontag, Sidnersville, Rocky Mountain, and of course, 220 North. Of course, uh, the Humane Society in Rocky Mountain reported damage such as trees down, heavy rain fall in small hill and of course uh, wind shear was also reported uh, in several homes uh, damage would cause that and uh, again there was a tornado that was reported uh, on that I forget the rating of that uh, EF tornado on there but uh, 50 to 60 miles per hour is a fast moving storm to say the least and again uh, thank you to Alan Bailey who had uh, some of our photos submitted into us there the scrap uh, company uh, took some of those uh, photos pretty interesting and I remember Remember, you know, this is severe weather season. We are right in the midst of it as uh, we are transitioning uh, from what we think is hopefully the last of our cold weather uh, moving in as well. I also want to begin with the freeze warning, our first and hopefully our last freeze warning of this uh, year. It does appear, or of the season, I guess, because we'll have another freeze and frost uh, date later in the fall. As you know, we are now uh, starting to welcome the growing season in as we're getting uh, that out there. This pretty much is a key factor. Remember vegetation, plants, anything you have already started planting, go ahead and either uh, bring them in. Of course, if you have such things as lettuce or little cabbage here and there, that should be okay for now. But again, our typical frost and freeze date, we're getting right close to it. Matter of fact, again, our friends west of our area up towards the Nuva Valley, their average frost and freeze date is not until mid to late May. So that is some interesting things. Uh, for us as well now that we have moved on with again the freeze warnings that will continue until 9 a.m on our wednesday so keep that in mind chilly today and we'll drop temperatures will start and be in a hurry here we go I'm trying to get my words right here out there for you 54 right there with the slant, lots of sunshine again clear skies overnight are going to allow our temperatures to plummet like a rock real fast you know we go from 50 to 39 in just a matter of a few hours we could possibly get even colder than this some parts of the computer models are showing that we could see some much colder temperatures in some parts of our neighboring areas. Again, the outlining areas could wake up in the upper 20s tomorrow morning as you're getting your day started. So it is going to be a cold and frosty start to your day on your Wednesday as we will begin to see the clear skies out there. A mix of sun and clouds will be the theme for the day, a lot warmer than it was on this Tuesday. A high of 65 here in the city. There'll be a southwest breeze coming out of the five to 10 miles per hour. So we're gonna 
uh, switch the north breeze to the southwest breeze out there. Overnight lows pretty much area-wide will be in the low and mid 40s. Some upper 30s are possible as you make your way out and about too. So again, our area-wide temperature is four parts of Medicine Den, 56 there, 50, uh, 64 in Stewart, 65, usually the popular number, up and down the 220 corridor. So nothing uh, to be worried about there. Again, a mix of sun and clouds for everybody, 64 outside of Ferrum and Boone's Mill out towards Sontag and uh, Sidnersville. Again, the same areas where that tornado uh, ripped right through. And to give you some perspective, Let's talk about, you know, I wish I could kind of zoom out on this map a little bit more, but let's kind of get a little more realistic here. So 220, you know, runs right around right in here. This is uh, Bassett Forks, right around uh, Phildale, Collinsville area. So you kind of take 220 and then take it right up here. There's 220 right there. There's our, our nice, our good friend, Peter Forrester, put a lot of effort making this map, by the way. Thanks for his uh, hard work. 220 runs right there. I believe that's Sidnersville and right there somewhere in the Boone's Mill, Sontag district. So that tornado kind of was like riding through here and giving up towards, again, 220 starts roughly about right outside of Collinsville and kind of makes its way up towards Roanoke. And of course, it also extends down down uh, into Ridgeway, and of course you have 58 into the 220 interchangeable sections there in the Ridgeway uh, going into the Martinsville City area. So just keep that in mind, but again, Centerville's right there, and again, Sontag and uh, the uh, Snow Creek communities within this district. So kind of imagine that tornado riding through here, and of course, north of 220, just outside of Boone's Mill there in the little communities, and uh, Union Hall also uh, seeing some impact with that too. And of course, Burt Chimney way up towards here, not an impact to that part of the area, but again, they also saw some debris. In Martinsville, you pretty much scaved most of that tornado concern three years ago. So that was three years ago on the 19th day of April, letting you know that we, you know, we have seen almost everything uh, to this point to the severe weather outbreaks to uh, even a little snow in some parts of reporting. We got reports of some sleep pellets out towards our friends in Patrick County, picking up a little bit of wintry mix out there yesterday in most areas. So kind of saw a cold and uh, damp rain, not very uh, day to, a good day to stay in stores. Of course, a lot of people are now back to work and school after the Easter and spring break holiday. So you're well, you welcome back in some much nice weather, I guess, compared to Monday. So if you didn't have to go into work yesterday, you were very thankful because it was wet and damp and uh, gloomy out there. But we were here for you to keep you updated on all of that as well. And again, mix of sun and clouds, no rain expected tomorrow, but it's going to be very cold. First thing tomorrow morning, our lows again in the upper 20s and low 30s out there. And again, that freeze warning, I'll pull that up for you one more time. We'll end it with that as uh, remember that we're now in that time of year where we do begin to see uh, this uh, typical cold air uh, that sinks in from the south and, or excuse me, comes in from the north, not the south. The south gives, or the north, let's get that right. Let's get my, let's get my geography right here. Cold air sinks from the south, comes from the north to the south. Warm air moves from the south to the north. It gives us that warm flow, which results in that southerly wind direction right there as well. I kind of think I may have to add a compass or something on here. So I'm not getting my directions all mixed up, but we are human. We make error here and again. So again, that goes until 9 a.m. on your Wednesday morning. Just keep that in mind. You want to have any uh, vegetations and plants, bring them all in. Like I said, if you have some cabbages and maybe some lettuce uh, starch, you should be okay with those. But again, if you already have some of your main flowers out there in your garden, go ahead and either uh, put the plaster graph over. That does a pretty good job. If you're kind of looking for some tips, get some plaster graph this afternoon afternoon from work. I know it's going to be windy out there. Maybe wait till the wind subsides later this evening, which it will. Go out there and kind of put some plaster wrap over your plants so they obviously the heat can, one, escape it, and of course will keep it radiational cooling on it. And of course, first thing tomorrow morning, do be careful making sure that you do have, if you have plaster wrap around your plants out there, around your garden beds, uh, first of all, you know, of course, now that now we have all these deer, not much going around, but of course we do have uh, the snakes and the, the bears and everything starting to come emerging. So you want to keep those protective. That, of course, that's coming later in the season to be too. So again, 9 a.m. tomorrow morning for everybody in shade in here in this dark purple color. Just keep that in mind. It's going to be frosty and cold tomorrow morning. But the good news is we'll begin to see some of that warm weather move back in for after tomorrow. We could approach the mid to upper 80s by the time we get towards the weekend. And one more final note on our pollen suffers. I know it's been pretty rough the last couple of weeks. Thankfully, we had that rain on Monday that washed the lo uh, levels down to a medium level for th today through Thursday. Of course, 
they are expected to get back and remain on the high side as we head towards the upcoming weekend. So students heading out to prom uh, there from Magna Vista, you're actually going to Eden. Uh, that's where the prom is held uh, there this weekend. We'll have your forecast for you on that and let you know what you can be expecting and a lot of good things here on the Neighborhood Network. So we appreciate your company. I'm going to say farewell and I bid you adieu. I will catch you back on Wednesday on the Neighborhood Network. Stay tuned. We have more to come. Your BTW 21 weather forecast is sponsored by Zentmeyer Chiropractic.